There was a boy who sent me a note, and he describes how he's the best boy in this year. He answers the questions when the Rebbe is not available. And he writes, imagine how I'm standing there on Yom Kippur thinking about the things I've read and the things I've seen, knowing I'm going to do it again. The Satmar Rebbe said that his Hasidim were exposed to more in one bus ride from Williamsburg to Manhattan than their grandparents were in their lifetime in the shtetl. That was in 1950. Today, in one minute on the internet, our children are exposed to so much more than that bus ride could possibly have exposed them to. The average first exposure to pornography in children today is 11 years old. Children that are 11 years old are going home, doing homework, and usually by accident the first time, they're exposed to inappropriate content. They often wish they could rewind the clock because they say once they see it, these images come into their heads in a way that's very, very hard to get rid of. And it's tragic, it's, it's really hurtful to see. The viewing of inappropriate material becomes an addiction, a real addiction. When we deal with addictive behaviors, there are literally neural pathways in the brain that start changing. There are pleasure centers in the brain that start being created, that start being depended upon. We are dealing with kids who could easily fall into an abyss that is not just a teenage problem, but quite frankly, a marriage problem, uh, a self-esteem problem that carries into well into adulthood. The addiction to inappropriate material is something that shuts you down emotionally. The only emotion that you have when you view, view this is your purient interest. So when you're addicted to the viewing of in, inappropriate material, how can you have a loving relationship, a normal relationship with a wife, with family members, with your children? Parents put these elaborate security systems on their houses to keep people out, and then they let everybody in through the computer. You would never allow your child to leave your tight-knit safe community and go into a very depressed, run-down area. I once spoke in a yeshiva, and I asked for a couple of questions. I figured I'd get one or two brave students. One said that uh, I'm angry at my parents. My parents could have stopped this, and they hadn't, and they still not and the putting his gates are in front of me, I can't control myself. And the parents are just trusting them because my kid wouldn't do that. But they have to understand it's normal for kids to be curious. Human beings are wired that way. And if you put them in front of technology that is unlimited, they will be curious. People don't want to accept that their really good kid could get sucked into these dangers. On the surface, they're still good kids, they're still showing up, trying to dive and trying to learn. And then on the other side, they know of the secret, dark reality that's also part of their life, but that they can't share with anyone. They don't even have the tools to fight it and talk about it because there's just tremendous guilt and there's tremendous fear. What are the parents going to say? What are the teachers going to say? They're throwing out of yeshiva. internet pulls a kid in to thinking that they're totally private, that it's just them and the screen in a dark room with nobody watching, when in fact the audience is basically the whole world. Kids don't realize the content is forever and it's going to be there their whole life. Everything that you do and every button you've pushed ends up recorded permanently. You know how when you click that little agreement at the beginning of signing on to a, to a service like Facebook, we don't even realize what we're clicking on to. They basically own the content. When you have a posting on Facebook, that becomes literally part of your permanent record that is hard to expunge later on. Once it's on the internet, once it's there, we don't know where it's gone. 
and it can, it can easily come back to haunt you. Many parents come to me, they say, I'm, I'm 50 years old, I'm not learning this stuff. So I said, well, that's just not an option. I'm not asking you to become a computer whiz. Understand the basics of what your child, what your children are faced with. They can't really grow as Jews, as religious Jews, as from people, as El Chayidin, because they're already, their mind is already taken up and they already have a different direction because of what they've seen, what they've been exposed to. So davening is not a davening, and learning is not learning. And adherence to Allah and Yerushalayim, it's all missing because everything has been watered down and thrown off kilter. Adolescents are asked, when you are the parent of a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, how will you handle the internet differently than your parents handled the internet? What's amazing to me is most kids say, I'm going to be much more strict. And a parent has this false sense of, uh, of security that my child's on the internet, have a filter, all is good. All is not good. Filters won't do it. Filters give us a false sense of security and it doesn't create the solution. It doesn't create the interaction between parent and child that's necessary for a child's learning experience. If you want to know whether our children will internalize our hashkafa, our perspectives in life, it's very much tied to the quality of time between parent and child. Kamayim panim el panim, kein leifa adam, our hearts bounce off each other.